Do you speak English, yeah. please? No. It's gotta be loaded exactly with a forklift into a truck. Yeah, we're gonna try and find a truck. I don't think that's high enough. We're hoping it fits in the back. Nearly two months ago, our van was loaded onto a ship in Los Angeles, bound for Japan. She finally arrived in Tokyo, and after clearing customs, we headed out of the city. We just couldn't quite believe it. Our first park up in the van, and we're looking at Japan's iconic Mount Fuji. Here's to the next chapter of our around the world drive. The most dangerous risk of all, the risk of spending your life not doing what you want on the bet that you can buy yourself the freedom to do it later. Randy Commissar. Third day in Trudy in Japan. What is going on with the weather? Parked up with a beautiful view over Mount Fuji. So yeah, it's uh, not a very nice day here today. And we've also developed a little bit of a problem. The, uh, the side door, we opened it yesterday and it took us about 15 minutes to close it because it's dropped and the rollers are completely seized up. It's an absolute nightmare. Um, we have managed to close it, although you can see a bit of daylight through there, um, but it's locked. I remember when we used to have dogs at home and we went on holiday and we got back and they used to sulk. I think she might be sulking, but we're going to have to get a door checked out. So we actually had a follower reach out to us uh, yesterday, um, an American guy married to a Japanese lady. He's lived in um, Japan forever. I think like 20 years or 25 years. And uh, he's invited us to his house uh, to hang out tonight. And he says he's got contacts so he should be able to help us fix the door. So we're taking him up on his offer and uh, we're going to go and head there now. It's been a, a great little park up. We've been here for a couple of nights and uh, they leave the toilets open 24 hours. And I just love the fact that the toilets have heated seats and they are immaculate, absolutely immaculate. So Marianne's going to just go and pay a visit before we leave. <laughs> Arriving at Ryan and Aikiko's house, we were greeted with the warmest welcome. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> with the sun finally shining, they sparked up the barbecue and we spent the evening eating, drinking and relaxing. The perfect end to the day. So today is the day we're going to attempt to have a look at the door. Ryan's gone to grab his toolkit. He's pretty handy with his tools. Look, there you go. He's coming. I got something <laughs> to do. I wouldn't say handy. Okay. This always makes me nervous, but we'll open the door. Oh, it's very... That's right. Stiff. Don't go all the way. I'm not going all the way. Ryan carefully inspected the mechanics of the door. We decided we needed to remove the whole bottom roller system for a closer look. Okay, we've worked out that the roller's actually down to the metal. There is no plastic. If you, did, <laughs> if you didn't know better, you would say, ah, they're rollers. Now take a look at that. Take a look where they're supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> There's no plastic left and, on it. And it's actually gone down to the metal now. Yeah, it, on the, and that's, the frame um, itself. That's the frame itself. So the roller is here. That's the you can problem. see the flat part. This is where he was getting stuck. That uh, flat part would stop and it would stop rolling. We've got a set of rollers that we've had for a while now. Uh, we're going to get Ricardo to do these in Mexico. Ricardo, we forgot to do the rollers at the door. Ryan's taken off. We've looked at it. We've come up to the conclusion that we think these pins were riveted, which we are unable to do. But we've noticed that the company we normally use in Slovakia sells the whole unit with the rollers and everything on it. So I think we're just going to place an order. It's just an excuse to come back and see Ryan again. <laughs> I can't get rid of him. I can't get rid of him. <laughs> Ryan also said that despite having all of these different propane adapters, that we may actually have problems getting propane or LPG here in Japan. The joy of travel. Sometimes even the simple things can be a royal pain. So we use propane for cooking in the van for the gas rings, but that's okay because we've bought a camping gas stove. We also use propane to heat our hot water, but that's all right because we can always have cold showers. 
The gas also controls the heating system of the van, but that's okay because we've got a diesel heater under the front seat so we can still heat the van if we have to. So our biggest problem would be the fridge, which is also powered by the LPG. If we can't fill Trudy up with LPG, then we'll have to see if we can get a 12 volt fridge. But when our fridge broke in Turkey and we had to buy a 12 volt fridge, we realized that Trudy's electrical system wasn't strong enough to cope with running the fridge all the time. So we're really grateful to Jackery because when we couldn't ship our Jackery power banks from the USA to Japan due to regulations, last week they sent us a 1500 Pro portable power station to the hotel we were staying in. Yes, oh, wow. Jackery. Oh, wow. That's it, that's perfect. And Jackery does a variety of different sized power banks from the very portable 240 watt hours to their newly released 2000 plus model. The 1500 Pro portable power station that they sent us will be powerful enough to continuously run a 12 volt fridge if we need one. It's designed to charge really fast. In fact, amazingly, if plugged into the mains, this power bank can charge in two hours. But for us, we don't have mains, so we can charge it by plugging it into the 12 volt while we're driving. Well, by plugging in the 200 watt solar panel. You can also charge it with multiple solar panels, so we could get another one if we found that we needed to charge it quicker. And on those rainy days when we're parked up and Trudy is not going to get any solar, this is going to be incredibly handy because we can charge all our devices. And if we hang out in more remote locations, it has a built-in light that we can use. We can also plug in our USB lights like we did when we were hanging out with our buddies in Baja. So I feel much better knowing that we got a bit of a backup plan just in case we can't get Trudy filled up with LPG. But fingers crossed we'll be able to find it somewhere. So we want to say a massive thank you to Jackery UK for taking away that stress from us this week. And if you want to know more about their power banks, check out the link in the description below, particularly their new 2000 plus model, which is new out this week. Good morning. It's Monday morning and we had some good news over the weekend. We got an email saying that our stuff has arrived um, in Yokohama. The shipping agent's given us a contact um, to get a customs agent. So the mission this morning is to try and call the customs agent to arrange to pick our stuff up and stop them delivering our stuff to the friend's address we've got in the south of Japan, which is about 15, 20 hours drive away. It is. It is indeed. <laughs> Hi, all. Uh, do you speak English, uh, please? No. How do you know? Or our company. Um, Ma <clears throat> Marine Star Corporation. Eh? No. I don't know. Okay. Can you wait one minute, please? Nanka Marine Star no kaisha ga. Nanka tabun Los Angeles kara. Ano kono hito ga nimotsu ga okutte kara. It's never easy. <laughs> Luckily, Ryan and Aikiko came to our aid and did their best to explain to the company that we needed their help to guide us through the complicated process of trying to clear our pallet of personal belongings through customs. I guess this isn't a normal situation for them. I mean, how often do they get a call regarding a delivery of belongings from the US for a UK couple who were transiting through Japan on a temporary import? <laughs> Listening to the conversation, probably not that often, but it seemed like it was going okay. And they asked us to email them all of our paperwork. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, rock stars. Because we haven't got a clue what's going on. Okay, we had an email back from the customs agent. And they're talking about shipping the stuff to an address in the south of Japan, which is Ursul's friend that we use as a contact address. So we have to stop that. So the guys are just inside giving them a, the agent a call now to try and explain. <laughs> we had to have a Japanese contact address to ship our belongings. But the last thing we needed was to have to drive 15 hours to the south of Japan to collect our stuff. I nervously waited with everything crossed. Good news, we can collect it. But then we realized that we had another problem. You, can't, you cannot take apart the pallet on the landing area. 
Um, it has to be completely wrapped and loaded by forklift into a truck. Of course it does. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot, so, you know, they're in boxes, right? So you think you can just open the wrapping. It's just a plastic cellophane wrap, right? So, but they said you cannot open so, the pallet. You have to, it's got to be loaded exactly with a forklift into a truck and then taken out of there. Okay. Maybe we have to get a rental truck. Did they say how long it would take? Like when we can collect it? Like any day or we just got to do the paperwork first? 26 Friday. Quake. That's freaky. That just came up. It's wobbling. Feel the van. Oh yeah. But you can see by the wires. Stay calm. It says strong. Sh oh my God, this is really odd. Hang on, stay calm and seek shelter nearby. Seek shelter. We're in the open. It's We're all right. Open. You don't want to go inside. Our first earthquake in Japan. Not surprising, considering Japan has more earthquakes than any other country in the world. In fact, they have around 1,500 per year. That's four or five a day. So I have a feeling it won't be our last. So the plan is we're gonna be collecting our stuff on Friday. Today is only Wednesday. And so rather than just staying here and waiting, we thought we'd go and have a little trip around the peninsula and just see what's about. Get out for a couple of days here in Japan. It's a very agricultural area, loads of polytunnels. We're actually on the Izu Peninsula, uh, just west of Yokohama. And uh, we're gonna head down, down the coastline um, of the peninsula and just see what we can find. It's incredibly beautiful. So uh, we've had a productive couple of days. We've managed to order um, the parts for the door from uh, the company that we use in Slovakia. They're gonna take about six days to come into stock and then probably a week to get here. We've also um, ordered a new global Starlink so we can park in some very remote places where we can't get a, a service for our Connect Plus device. And we've got the customs agent all sorted out for uh, our belongings on, on Friday. So, so far so good, it's going good. We were wondering what these lines and these triangles mean, but they're actually warning that there's a pedestrian crossing here. Just for the record, pedestrians have a 100% right of way and uh, you can get fined hugely. So even if somebody is standing on the sidewalk, the pavement, and they don't step onto the crossing, you should still stop. The reasons why the uh, white lines are so far back at the traffic lights, because getting around those corners, you need the space to turn because these roads are pretty small, especially for our girl Trudy. She's a little bit chubby in Japan. <laughs> Everywhere you go, there's like these little temple shrine entrances. It just feels so cool, doesn't it? It really does. We're in Japan! We are in Japan, people. Oh, I can see the sea! That's it. That is the first glimpse of the sea coming round the corner. Oh, it always looks better on a blue sunny day. Birds of prey hovering above, look, look huge look ones. Wow. They're right there. Loads of them. See those like bonsai style trees. It just feels Japanese, doesn't it? I, can't believe, I still genuinely cannot believe <laughs> we've made it. Japan. Japan. Oh, it's amazing. I'm so excited. So when we designed our new Van Slation t-shirt, if you haven't seen it, it's the perfect way to translate stuff when you're traveling and you don't speak the language. But we were concerned that the letter P may not be the same letter for parking here in Japan. But um, looking at the signs, it definitely is. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? It's wild. Just... They're all stood there fishing. It's just absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful. We just had to stop. Look at this. Oh, the smell of the sea, the blue water. 
And that is Mount Fuji, covered by clouds at the top. All the way down this coastline, there's these little fishing communities. What a magical place. I'm not sure these roads are designed for Trudy, but we'll just go slowly. Problem is the overhanging branches, not just the uh, the width of the road, because I don't think they get vehicles like Trudy coming down there. <laughs> I can't believe how blue the water is. I know, it's wild. I can't believe how narrow the roads are as well. I know. It's a good job you know the size of your van, Marianne. It's true. I wouldn't want to do this in a lorry. Yeah, if you have a, a big uni mark or an overlanding vehicle or even a big motorhome, um, yeah, these roads in Japan might be a bit of a challenge. We just pulled over and we got wonderful views over paddy fields. Right at the bottom of the hill though, there's a whole patch of paddy fields growing rice. Overlooked by Mount Fuji. So we've turned off the coast now, we're heading inland. Uh, we're heading towards some amazing looking waterfalls uh, that we've seen online that we're gonna go and check out. Oh, we're actually going down a spiral bridge. Oh, look, How mad is this? The road's going to go down in a spiral. Okay, so we've come all the way down the peninsula. We drove round the coastline here, cut across the middle, and we've come down to this point here which is famous for its seven waterfalls. Look, you can see them here. I just love the way that they do all these trees into like giant bonsais. Yeah, when I was asking local people about where do we go to see bonsai and they went everywhere, they're just on the street. <laughs> they are like, literally. Really? So we're just walking down and they're putting scaffolding up on this building. They've obviously had a huge fire. Look, it's taken out all the insides of the building. But I can hear water, so we're definitely heading to a waterfall. We're definitely in the jungle. It does feel very humid and very tropical. Oh my goodness, I've just spotted the waterfall. It's massive. Oh, look at the colour of the water. Wow. Check that out for a waterfall. And we've got different couples. See the steam coming off that one. Okay, so we've just set, asked the lovely lady at the ticket office here. This is an onsen, and uh, you can pay a thousand um, yen and go and soak in some of these hot pools below with the waterfall behind. So although we've walked all the way up uh, down the steps here. We're gonna go back to Trudy, grab our swimmers, and uh, I think we should go for a little soak in some of those pools, because it looks pretty magical. We're back with swimmers. Okay, there's a, there's a machine to put your money inside. Hi. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> the lady on the counter was just so lovely. What do you reckon, love? I reckon. With views like that, I reckon this is a pretty nice thing to do. That is so lovely. 
Japan has around 25,000 volcanic hot springs, or onsens as they are locally known. Usually segregated by sex, we were lucky to have found a mixed one that we could enjoy together. Not a bad spot for our first ever onsen. There's an indoor one. Oh my God, it's so steamy. I've got to take my glasses off. We're coming underground. Where does it go? This is pretty nice. Yeah. Recommended if you come to Japan, definitely try an onsen. So after a wonderful soak in that onsen, we found this spot to park up. It's actually a service station um, up here, not far, just up in the hills. And uh, apparently you can park up in these overnight. So fingers crossed should be good. And uh, it's very quiet because it's out of season. So this is where we're gonna stay the night tonight. Okay, we come back to Ryan and Aikiko's house. And today, <laughs> tonight, we're going out for a little bit of a nice dinner. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna, they're going to take us to a local place. So here we are. This is it. <laughs> wow, you can't get more traditional than this. Slipping off my shoes, I thought this is the Japan that I wanted to experience. <laughs> How much fun is this? We feel really privileged to have met such lovely people that have invited us into their world. Mama, this is the owner, Mama. Ah. We get to uh, sit down on these seats. We got, I got a little back here. Ah. Hi. You got to try and get your legs under the table. That's always a challenge. I can't, Ryan's I can't do it either. Ryan's short. <laughs> I still can't do it. Shorter. Cheers. You can see all the way on the on the wall. These are the, I think these are the menu dishes, are they? That's correct. Yeah. This will be like the normal ones they have, and then some places they'll have a whiteboard that has like the daily. Oh, I can see daily, that. Yeah. The daily specials and stuff too. So other stuff that they have. And then behind this, the counter, you'll see all those bottles. And behind us, you see all these bottles, right? Yeah. These are bought by the customers. They buy the bottle off the store. Oh, and then they and leave then they, it here. And they, and they leave it here. And so when they come, they can drink for free. See how, you can see how popular it is because everyone behind the counter, all those green bottles and all those have names written on them. So they call the uh, owner of the restaurant Mama is like her nickname. Uh, no, you can call any owner, um, any owner that's an older lady above 60 that always comes to the bar things you call her mama so this is like a, a freebie they give you with your beer fermented pickled vegetables what do you think it's a unique taste i don't think i've ever tasted anything like that what do you think there's going to be a lot of firsts for us in japan no. so our, our first sashimi so we got some like daikon radish here some little peep seaweed. in the pods, some seaweed. So we got a little bit of wasabi, which is like really hot. So we got a bit of salmon, completely raw salmon, into the soya sauce, and then we're gonna go for it. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> that is his food. That food. is so good. Umai. <laughs> and umai means amazing like lovely i love it and try the dumplings and this is a mix of soy sauce and vinegar that you're supposed to dip it into i have a small confession i could just eat dumplings all day and all night i love them mm. okay so we got a bit of a special dish here look at that what is it called mochi um it's usually a new year's dish it's rice where it's been smashed down with a hammer, usually a big wooden hammer, until it's pulverized into a sticky, gooey thing. Old people can choke on it sometimes. So oh, don't choke, Marianne, go Don't on. choke. So, okay. it comes in like a little soup here. <laughs> oh, 
Don't. <laughs> <laughs> How is the texture? <laughs> Not good, right? Yeah. <laughs> sticky? It's sticky. very sticky. It tastes very... It tastes like glutinous, ricey, with a nice soupy bit around it. It actually, it feels Spreading. a bit like semolina. Is that too big to eat like that? No, you'll put yeah. it in there. Don't show on it. <laughs> Very chewy, <laughs> chewy. Sticky. sticky. It's like a rice bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sat savoring this wonderful local experience and felt truly privileged. Putting our lives online, we literally get hundreds of messages. If we hadn't have accepted Ryan's invitation, we would never have had this wonderful experience. So next time somebody invites you to do something, just say yes. You never know how it will end up. It's a wonderful experience. What the? Oh. 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 Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, this is a traditional way of doing uh, Japanese sake. Um, they use give extra service. Now this one does a little bit more rare. Um, usually it's done in a wooden box. Um, that's actually done with a traditional um, festival such as the Hinamatsuri, which is a doll festival. Um, these these wooden cases are represent life because they're made of cedar, Japanese cedar. Um, this one, unfortunately, they're not. They don't have the wooden ones. But they do this pouring and it pours over to give extra service. It means this is a kind restaurant. They welcome you here. Now, when you drink it, you can't pick it up. You've got to sip it from the top. So let's see what Chris can do. I'm going to have to slurp it, but this is my first experience of sake. There you go. Wait. Oh, it's really good. Oh, really? Yeah. Who am I? I just want to share the toilet in here because when you flush, you get to wash your hands at the top at the same time and the water gets recycled back into the system. How amazing is that? Thank you, Mama. <laughs> okay, this morning, it is a bit panicked. It is 6.50 in the morning. We have to get to Yokohama by 11 and it's quite a long drive because we have to pick our stuff up. Yes, today is the day we should collect Trudy's belongings. Got a nice view of Mount Fuji this morning. It's not a bad view, first thing in the morning, is it, my sweetness? I think Ryan and Aikiko live in a most beautiful part of this country. And granted, we haven't seen much, but this is very beautiful. It is. Ryan and uh, Aikiko, are uh, driving to Yokohama. They're going to be quicker than us because we're in Treaty, but they're going to pick up a van because Custom said they're just going to load the pallet straight into the vehicle. We're not allowed un to unpack it and it won't fit in Trudy and it won't fit in their car. So we've had to hire a van. So uh, hopefully that all goes well. That's just another bit of added drama. I genuinely have butterflies in inside my stomach because Without Aikiko and Ryan helping us with the Japanese translation, we would be in real trouble. Absolutely. Okay, 20 minutes to go, and we should be there 40 minutes before the deadline. So we're doing good. That car park. Your destination is on the right. Yes, it's that one there. Okay, just calling the agent. He should be meeting us here. Um, konnichiwa, Mr. Taniguchi. Marianne did her best to explain that we'd arrived at customs office, but without speaking Japanese, we really didn't get anywhere. Bye. No. We're not sure what's happening. No, he said, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. Are you going to try and call? I'm going to message Ryan. Aikiko. Aikiko. Okay. Ryan. So yeah. those guys, yeah, those guys are, are getting the, um, the van now, so they should be only a little bit behind us. So if we can just get the guy to meet us yeah, that'd be great. and give us the paperwork so we're all ready, that would be yeah, fabulous. Be okay. Two, three. Let's go and see what happens. I'll have to leave the camera here because it's a customs office. We met up with our agent and headed up to the customs office. 
Luckily, Ryan and Aikiko arrive shortly after to help explain our situation. Okay, so we've met up with uh, these guys. We've done, we've done round one of the paperwork. Uh, this is the little minivan that they've rented to try and put the pallet in. We're hoping it fits in the back. We'll make it fit. So now we're going to a warehouse to hand him some paperwork and then we'll probably have to go for a customs inspection. Thank you, A-Team. Thank you. Red Bob. Oh, yeah. Baby, What's just... happening? Our stuff should be here somewhere. Okay, we've done the paperwork and now they're about to close. <laughs> We're hurrying up to see if we can get the pallet put, put, put in the back of the car. This is going to be interesting, Ryan. <laughs> Don't mind it. Back. Put the back in. Is it going to fit? Yeah. It's there. That one? Yeah, the box. On top of the blue one is that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think I think they're laughing at Ryan's truck. <laughs> oh. That's everything we own. <laughs> It is really. Yeah. Wow. It wasn't long before our pallet was loaded onto the forklift. Although, looking at the size of the pallet and the size of the truck that Ryan rented, I wasn't convinced that it would fit. Is it going to go in? <laughs> it's very cool. Okay. He's posing for a photo. Okay. It fits! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we did it, man! We did it! <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> so, what we got customs at 1.30? One o'clock. Yeah, one one o'clock. And then this guy back at 1.30, so we're going to be getting right there. The boxes are in. Everything we own, we cannot thank these guys enough. They're, They're amazing. amazing. They're amazing. They're amazing. <laughs> Woohoo! But now we're lost in the shipping port. Yeah, we are. <laughs> no, we just can't get out of the shipping port. That's it's a big shipping port. <laughs> We had a couple of hours until our customs inspection, and so we found a nearby eatery for some lunch. Oh, this is cozy, guys. This is a little Japanese cafe. Is this the menu up there? These are the boards, the wooden boards of the menu? Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, what you got? That looks good. Yeah, yakitori, and this is an egg, fried egg, or egg inside, so let's see what happens. Let's here we go. Is it going to be runny? Yes! Yeah. Oh, that looks go. amazing! Wow! Hi! Arigato! Oh. Arigato! It's very big! Chicken! That looks amazing! Fried chicken! Oh, we got some soup! Miso soup! Nice! Rice! It's good, right? You just can't beat these little places. This is it's like a Japanese cafe, local food, cooked fresh in front of you. It's absolutely delicious. We're back at customs. Check time. Okay, customs is cleared and uh, we've done it all. The only thing they did take, we did have some um, needles and syringes that our GP back home gave us in case of emergencies if we're in some countries with dodgy needles. Um, but that's no problem. We just signed a waiver. But Trudy is rammed with boxes now, and uh, we've got a bit of unpacking to do, my sweetness. It's not goodbye because we're going to see you on the way back down. Of course we are. Of course we are. You've got the door bits and the Starlink coming that's to your house. And we're going to find them. If they can't come down, I'm going to find them You're wherever they're going to come and find us. And get it and fix it. Oh, this uh, is for you? From her. Oh. 
I love green tea. I love green tea. I just don't know what we would have done with customs without these guys because the language, even the agent didn't speak any English, so it's been difficult. It's always sad saying goodbye, but we'll be catching up with these guys again in a few weeks' time. But first, we're heading to the north of Japan.